I created something unbelievable, fun and atmospheric. In just 140 hours, I built the huge dead castle of Lady Dmitrescu in Minecraft. Many people know the game Resident Evil Village as something scary, abandoned and atmospheric, with dry trees, eternal cold and snowy peaks, where among them stands a majestic dark castle that hides many secrets. It was this first meeting with the castle that inspired me to create this mega project. I literally fell in love with this atmosphere of cold and death, which I tried to convey in my new project. Of course, it would take a long time to make such a terrain by hand, so I used a software called Wild Painter to quickly earn what I need and turn it all into this masterpiece. <laughs> So let's start building with terraforming, because before building my project I need to polish some points and layer some areas. I clear the area of excess tree, draw a test plan to try the schemes for the landscape. Again clear the area of trees and start expanding this area on which there should be a small courtyard in front of the castle. Here I have to pull the foot of the mountain, so that it would be easier to lay the plan of the foundation under the castle, but I polish it so that it looks more natural. Next I draw the plan of the castle, which I completely calculated in Photoshop in advance, so as not to adjust the scale in the future. I will also draw the plan of the first floor in advance, from which I will start building all the other floors including the attic. Later I marked the courtyard in front of the castle. The next stage is designing a 3D model for the future castle from wool. This is made too easy to see where and which elements are located, for example walls, roof and towers, because thanks to a 3D model it is easier to move an empty wall made of wool than to try to do it with many details. The 3D model shows well the future proportions, dimensions and scale of the castle, making the construction process easy. Here I am making one of the parts of the castle from full, which is located near a mountain river. As you can see I used the blue wool to build the walls of the castle, but the red wool is already various additional details of the castle, for example towers, and with cyan wool I mark a roof for myself. In the 3D model I try to set not only the shape, but also to place the holes for windows, doors and possibly balconies in the appropriate places. They will serve a reference points for future work in the exterior. While I was explaining the process of building the 3D model, I had already built and mirrored this part of the castle. Next, I began to form the probably the highest part of the castle, which consists of the main castle part and many small towers, which are the features of the castle. While I am building the 3D model, I will tell you about Mitrescu castle and where it is located. Most likely this place is Eastern Europe, maybe somewhere in Romania among the Carpathian mountains. The castle and village in the game is a fictional location, but the developers were definitely inspired by the ancient Eastern European culture and architecture. It is believed that the castle has a real prototype that the developers were inspired by. This is the Palace Castle in Romania. You should see this illustration and compare it for yourself. There are many similarities and differences. So, I start to build the back part of the castle completely improvisationally. I took the style of the castle as a basis and I think that such a large extension can be well integrated, which looks different from the front of the castle. Therefore, I am very glad that I gave up the symmetry and added something of my own to this fictional castle. Next I started to design this part of the castle and I realized that it is possible to make a large rectangle here, because the roof in the game indicates that there should be something like that. And then I added a plan to the windows showing the good structure 
of the castle. Moving on, you can see that I didn't drag this rectangle all the way to that part of the castle. I decided that it would be better to make the transition chaotic and build many different rectangles between them, which is quite unique. I think you like what I improvised here. I continued working and added more details throughout the castle, laying out windows, various ledges and more detailed towers. This courtyard is quite a unique unique and interesting part of the castle, which complements the overall atmosphere and very nicely. Such courtyards were popular in Europe because the inhabitants of the castle had a place to walk and relax, because outside the castle was probably quite risky. After sketching out the shape, I made windows and balcony areas like in the original game. Then I began to build this a huge hall in the castle, connecting the already finished part and forming a new big wall. By the way, in the game there is a, an opportunity to go to the roof, so we will talk about it in the future. And behind me I have another big hall in the castle, which should be also be built and formed in the basis of references from the game. While I am building this part, I want to tell you some of my construction methods. So how do I manage to build such a large project? In general, I used to Minecraft, there are the fully licensed account. On the first I built in 144 FPS with no lags and 12 chunks. But the second Minecraft is used to record my future plays. I set the full 64 chunks and place the client in the middle of the map and record it. This is the distribution of tasks. It allows me to record top big replies without problems and most importantly without lags, without losing my nerves. And all these accounts go to a separately running build server with plugins, provided by my friend Phoenix. When I'm rebuilding something from the games, I have the game running in the background as well and flying with the free camera allows me to see all the details from the different angles, which helps a lot. Now let's build here a yard in front of the castle, which will be surrounded by a stone wall. First, I made a 3D model of the entrance to the courtyard towers and walls. Then I began to raise the walls of yellow wool, which in the future will become a wall of the stone. There on the other side, he added the tower. And I marked where the roads will be with brown wool. And here I will build another interesting part of the castle, which is separated from the main castle and connected by a bridge that stands over the river. Here in the original castle there is a huge hole with many benches and a black coffin in the end of the hole. Now we are at the final stage in the design of the 3D model. I also really like this part of the castle. It is so detailed, tall and massive, and it is not symmetrical from above, which is a feature. Then I added windows and more details. And I can proudly say that the 3D model is finally finished. It's time to use all the advantages of my 3D model. My goal now is to make several different types of castle towers individually. To do this, I simply copied all the red parts and pasted them all in one place near the castle. It's at the stage that the future style of the castle will begin to take shape. At first I thought what I would do as the original, but when I did in the Minecraft it was too easy for me so I turned on my improvisation and started creating. First I replaced the red wall to stone bricks, then I replaced the roof to black material and I invented all the exterior details entirely myself. I like that I added the rings to the tower, they add strange and detailed very nicely. I also thought that a brand accent would go well with the castle, so I added brown elements to the walls, to the towers and an outline to the roof. I did all for the other towers and I ended up with 12 towers that were unique in style and size, which I then simply copied and pasted into the castle in its place. The castle with these towers already looks very cool, but the time has come to completely get rid of the 3D model and move on to painting. 
And now I will explain what exactly happened. I will play the blue wool walls with stone bricks. I will add my own texture to them later. And after this I will play the sign wool roof to deep slate and basalt materials. Because this black color looks especially good with the grey castle. The castle becomes darker and more brutal. And now we will add a natural look to my castle. That is work with gradients. To do this I again took wool and went around the castle in this way painting in three different layers. These layers are to make it easier to make a gradient. For example, I will play the blue wool with dark blocks of this blade and basalt. Also, I will play the red wool with the same display but with tough inclusions, like an imitation of lighter layer and after I will play the purple layer with a compound of tough and various light stones. Thanks to this gradient, the castle looks quite natural and looks harmonious among the black rocks. Later I will play the upper part of the castle with a compound of various stones and the side, cracked brick, stone bricks and so on. I tried to cone with the impression with these blocks that the castle is already old and worn over time under the influence of harsh conditions. The long awaited moment has come to work on the exterior of the castle. I carefully selected every detail so that it would fit into the general style of the castle. Starting from one side, step by step I form the future look for the railings, windows, balconies and uh, the frames around them. And of course I couldn't miss many interesting details uh, that make the castle unique which I won't even have time to mention. While I moved all these windows outside the castle as I did with the towers, I moved each windows outside the castle to add variety and uniqueness to the design. I put a lot of effort into making each windows its own unique size, shape and look. Uh, there are currently over 20 different types of windows in the castle, which makes it better and more varied and helps avoid feeling monotonous and repetitive. I mainly made windows in 3D style using the layering method. The first layer is an outer frame made of diorit, behind which hides an acacia look. In the middle of of which there are hatches maintaining a window frame. And behind the acacia lock I made a layer of musical blocks and iron bars. And from brown blocks and colored glass I made another last layer. So we got a rather messy windows but very detailed in appearance. So according to this principle I made all the following windows but in different shapes and sizes. After I made all kinds of windows I started to put them in their places where they should be. And already here a quickly interesting picture is formed which is now to all of you. Later I started working on the other areas of the castle. The castle is so big that I I will not even describe all the changes, but I will show the main ones. The first thing I started doing on the exterior was the particular part of the castle. Here I forgot the inside the windows. So I quickly put them in and made some changes to the facade, namely rounding some arches. And I moved the blocks of redstone lamps to the middle by one block and added stairs as if imitating window seals. The next stage was to work on the highest part of the castle. I realized that to create an even more impressive effect it was necessary to add arches to the windows and more detailed to remake of the four towers of the castle. Windows with glass couldn't be overlooked either. While working on this element I tried to embody all my ideas about the style and designing of the castle. I want to draw your attention to this detail, because it somewhat resembles Greek architecture. Uh, only columns and gold are missing. I added there so that the wall of the tower wouldn't be too flat and empty. 
And under the detail I made such a balcony, from stairs and full blocks. It's simple but it looks great. It's time to visit the main entrance to the castle. It wasn't ready at the moment, so I hasn't to add the appropriate arches and place the windows on the right place. But that wasn't all, the side walls of this area needed special decoration. I carefully placed windows and arches above them on each side, giving this area a special magical feel. My hands moved like the speed of light, complementing the design of Mitovsku castle. Feeling like a real architect, I continued to work with each step closer to the creation for an amazing structure that will be remembered for ages. Well, at the final stage of work with the exterior, I started working on the exterior of the inner courtyard. I also copied the windows here by notice now without the iron bars, because they are not needed here. The Mitesco castle which is depicted in the game Resident Evil Village can be attributed to the Baroque style. Baroque is an artistic style that flourished in Europe from the 17th to the 18th century and is characterized by rich decorative elements, lace lines and colorful frescoes. As a Baroque building, Middle School Castle has distinctive features, such as various details and arches, colorful stunning glass windows, intricate cornices and uh, sculptures. Also, the castle has a complex and intricate structure with a large number of ledges, shapes and towers that are chaotically scattered throughout the castle. Towers and other architectural elements were a means of creating the impression of monumentality and splendor of the castle, which is typical to the Baroque style. In general, the number of towers with different sizes may simply be an element of the castle's design and its architectural beauty. Later, I also made this design for the column uh, that holds the upper floors of the castle. It was at this stage I took the well-known picture of the castle, which I published on the Minecraft Reddit. After that, I received about 3000 upvotes, many positive comments, and most importantly, thanks to this publication, news and gaming articles about my castle began to appear on the internet. All this gave me a huge push and motivation to continue to do future projects of similar scale. So I started building the courtyard. The first thing I did was the relief. The center area of the courtyard was at the bottom of the pit. Later I built the gazebo out of polished deep slate to mimic the black steel. And in the middle of the gazebo I built a hybrid statue with four faces. On stone roads, I create a beautiful railing from underside fence and pressure tiles. I used an axe and commands to make column what uh, were without joints. This railing have become not only a functional element, but also a great addition to the overall look, which inspires to walk around this place to play again and again. And already after the construction of the railings, I began to add my trees to make everything as in the original, so that these branches stick out among the fog and pump up a terrible atmosphere. Some trees I made by hand, some I took from my collection. Later I tried adding mangrove roots to add volume to the branches. Well, under the trees in this section I added dirt and thick bushes a little later. I replaced this tile with a compound of different stone materials and I poured layers of snow on these rows to make it look more natural. On the next day I added zones with different brushes and flowers to flow the original game and it already improved the picture. But it's not the end, because this large area waiting for me, which also needs to be processed. The first thing I did was make a deeper hole so that the slope of this hump was deeper. And then during various adjustments to the terrain I drew a brown wall patch, which I then replaced to a compound of different types of dirt, and to simulate the tracks of a chariot I made two curves lines from block of dirt and dark oak. 
wired closer to the exit I made four more sections for the future vineyard and from the blue wool I formed the basis for a stone fence along the road where I later made such creepy design. I took snow under the fences and also poured the uh, snow on even layers. And then I set about creating a vineyard. To make it stand out against the snow, I placed the snow on the steep hillside to rocks. And to create a more natural look, I applied many layers of snow to make the area smoother. The last stage will be the creation of the atmosphere. To make it, I need to work on the vegetation of the entire yard. To represent the grapes, I used a wooden fence and covered it with roots to make it look like a vineyard. Most likely in this area where the castle is located, there are seasons, because otherwise it's impossible to explain where the grapes come from here. Behind the fence, I decided to fill the woods with various bushes that wave along the walls and ground, just like in the original. Finally, I added trees to various sizes, oaks and spruce. I also planted many small trees on the hillsides outside the walls. I almost forgot about additional decorations, which are very important. I forgot to make three scarecrows near the vineyard, which in the original game were made of frozen human bodies. But before entering the castle I still had to build the chariot of the merchants, who was still called the duke. While I'm busy building the chariot, I will tell you more about the duke. Duke is mysterious merchant who meets the main character Ethan Winters in the game Resident Evil Viewers. It plays an important role in the game, giving the player the ability to buy and sell items, upgrade weapons and improve their characteristics. The Duke is a mysterious character who helps Ethan face off against enemies and gather the necessary resources to survive. He is also a source of interesting information about the game and its character something telling harsh truths about life in the village. The first I want to show you is the Hall of Worship, which is located in a huge tower near the castle, which is connected by a massive stone bridge. I also made this hall out of wool, so that later I could replace it all with the material options I needed. After placing the wool to the stone walls, I came up with a design for the columns that hold the stone ledges in top. Later he made wooden supports that uh, hold the roof. And uh, the most important thing is to fill the empty hole with various decorative elements, such as a black coffin in uh, which you can find a rare ritual dagger, which is used as a weapon and to solve certain puzzles. Later, I created benches that were completely recreated from the game. I even transferred their exact location. This hall was used for worship rites and lead the souls of the dead to a better patch. The next one of the key rooms is the Hall of Four, which I made from quartz because Minecraft has all the appropriate blocks for this. This hall is famous for its puzzle, which four angel statues, where the player must find all four masks. I won't reveal all the details about it, but the puzzle is the last one in the castle to get to the Hall of Worship. This is a small room, but it also plays an important role in the game. It's a merchant's room, in which sits the same duke that you can trade with. I especially like this room, as it's small but cozy, because it uses green and brown tones. The room is full of various curiosities, for example, this is area where the duke sits. I tried to corner every small detail in it, so it was as similar to the game as possible. Also in this room there is a mini puzzle, in the form of a 3D model of the castle, which I depicted in the way. This hall is probably one of the largest in this castle, because it's not only wide, but also high, because it takes up two floors. This is the main central hall, which simply takes your breath away. It's here that the strong spirit of Baroque is felt. Everything is uh, so refined and expensive. 
This hall provides access to the upper floors. This room is also made in green and brown tones, which makes it as atmospheric as possible. The main features of the hall are a huge wooden staircase leading to the second floor. There is also a huge hanging chandelier made entirely of gold and densely filled with candles, whose light fills the entire hall. This is the antechamber of castle and is the starting point of a wonderful journey. It's here start we first meet the three daughters of countless Dmitrisku Alkena. This room is also decorated in shades of green and brown and is traditionally divided into two parts by a staircase. Uh, here you can see a quartz wall with arches, in the middle of which hangs a painting depicting of the three daughters, Bella, Cassandra and Daniela. The dining room is also quite beautiful as it's a real life prototype that inspired the developers. This room has a large fireplace, beautiful carpets and some chairs tables with lots of dishes and food. The Dmitrisku family must have gathered around this table in the past, when life in the castle was busy. I like this room so much that I mentioned in my video. The second largest hall in terms of size and scale is the Opera Hall. This is simply an unbeautiful place in the castle because it's very beautiful. First I made the walls and the floor of the future hall, and then I placed the wooden pillars on which the second floor on this hall will stand, where there will be a large void in the middle overlooking the first floor. This hall has a large stage with red curtains. There is a piano in the hall and some tables for family members or castle guests. The Dmitrisku family must have been fond of opera, which uh, explains why the castle has such a large room. Another truly inspiring room is the atelier, designed for artists. This is where the paintings were made. In fact, all the paintings in the castle were made here. This room has its own puzzle to open the passage behind the painting. I like this room because it combines two styles at the same time. The walls are in green and brown tones, and the ceiling has a curved shape made of quartz. While there is a large panoramic window through which light enters and illuminates the whole room. It has its own atmosphere, and I am 100% sure that it has inspired artists to create their masterpiece. This is my top 1 place in the rating of favorite locations in the castle. This is a huge library where real chaos reigns under a glass dome. In the middle of the room a large glass dome is mounted in the ceiling, where light penetrates anywhere in the darkness. Under the dome there is a small area fenced with wooden supports, around which there is shelves with books. A lot of books are scattered around the room, as it's after a whirlwind. This room I want to show you is called the Ablution Hall. In the middle of it is a small pool of blood, around which are four statues to solve another puzzle in the castle. The ablution hall in castles was used for ritual purification and preparation for important events such as ceremonies and festivals. This hall is made of quartz and has a rather oval shape. I want to show you this is the last place in the castle, attic of the Dimitrescu castle. It also seems to me to be quite an interesting place, that's why I include it in this video. The attic is already made of stone and wood, with many wooden beams and structures visible. It's quite cozy and atmospheric, because I have worked hard in this place, by adding more details of my own, such as the connection of the old floor and the cobwebs which suggest an environment. You can only get here after solving the puzzle in the atelier. Of course, you can also use the lift to get to the roof, which can be found in the start hall of the castle.
I was very very happy to share with you this fascinating journey through Mitsuzuku Castle from the Resident Evil Village game. For me it was more of a challenge, a challenge to do something great and impossible at first glance. I can't even believe that I was able to achieve such a cool result. I spent 140 hours of my life on the castle, which is something it have never done before. Thank you for watching, please support me as such as possible with likes, share this video with everyone, people need to see this masterpiece. Also if possible you can support me financially by buying my maps on Patreon, so that there will be more desire to do something similar for you. Bye there.